Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Melbourne Shine of Remembrance. I am Squadron Leader Steve Campbell Wright, one of the Shine Governors here at the Shine. And I welcome you on behalf of the Chairman and the Board of Trustees to today's commemoration, which celebrates and commemorates the service and dedication of those associated with the B24 Liberator. This service was planned to be held last year, but due to COVID restrictions, it was not possible. So this marks the inaugural commemoration by the B24 Liberator uh, Association and uh, on behalf of the Shrine community, they are most welcome here today. By way of welcome from the B4, uh, B24 Liberator Society, I welcome to the platform Ms Lynn Gorman, the President of the B24 Liberator Memorial Australia. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you very much. So Squadron Leader Steve Campbell-Wright, Shrine Governor, Group Captain Carl Schiller, our patron of the B24 Liberator Memorial Australia, those veterans who are present and all other attendees, I sincerely welcome you this morning to what will be an annual commemorative event here at the Shrine. And we are, of course, delighted that uh, this can take place in 2021 because it couldn't in 2020 because of COVID restrictions. So why are we here? First, we wish to remember the crucial role played by B-24 Liberator Long Range Heavy Bombers in World War II, especially in the air war in the Pacific. They were a critical part of American and Australian air power in this theatre. Second, aircraft are nothing without dedica dedicated crew members. And today we pay tribute to the men and women, whether air or ground crew, who served with these aircraft. We acknowledge their service with immense gratitude. Third, ever since its inception, one of the aims of the B24 Liberator Memorial Australian Museum has been to serve as a memorial to all those who served with Liberators. We are most grateful that we now have this annual commemorative service here at the Shrine and that it is in the Shrine of Remembrance calendar because this allows us to extend this commemorative and memorial function. Fourth, on a personal note, my father was a Liberator pilot during World War II. Names of locations where he was based, such as Moritai, or over which he flew bombing missions, such as the Balikpapan oil fields, were familiar to myself and my siblings as children and, of course, as we grew up. And so this service has very special significance for me too. In conclusion, I wish to thank those at the Shrine of Remembrance who have made this event possible. I also thank our patron, Carl Schiller, for his generous assistance, the Master of Ceremonies, Mr. Chris Hudnot, the Chaplain, Reverend Keith Lanyon, the Bugler, Sergeant Brenton Burley, our marvellous veteran, Mr. Vern Roberts, who will recite the ode, his daughter, Glenda, who generously donated the wreath, and Mr. Andrew Wilcox, who designed and manufa manufactured our flag, uh, which is flying out on one of the flagpoles now. And it's really good to see that alongside the other flags here at the Shrine. So I thank you all for attending and I trust that this service will provide time for contemplation on the service and sacrifice of all those involved with the B-24 Liberator during World War II. Thank you, Lynn. Um, I'm Chris Hudnot. Um, I'm the MC for the remainder of this service of commemoration this morning. And we begin with the uh, mounting of the Catafalque Party. Catafalque Party, mount. I 
I now invite uh, Chaplain the Reverend Keith Lanyon to address us with a prayer for the nation. Let us pray. Creator God, your concern is the universe, and yet you still love and attend to the needs of the least of us. And so we pray for our nation, our politicians, our defence force, and all our people. May all our efforts to seek peace and harmony within the world succeed. Grant to us all the same courage and convictions, the same comradeship and service as has been shown in all the great struggles of our country for a true and lasting peace. Bless with courage and strength all those in the Australian Defence Force moved to take up arms if necessary to protect and serve our nation. We also seek that you bless, encourage, and give strength to those who have already served their country, those who still suffer disabilities, sickness or injuries received in conflict, those who grieve at the loss of a loved one, and those bereft of a father or mother's care and protection. May they all know the peace that only you can give. Amen. And now I invite um, Lynn Gorman again to recite the, the poem High Flight by John Gillespie McGee, Jr. Thank you. So, High Flight by John Gillespie McGee, Jr. Oh, I have slipped the surly bonds of earth and danced the skies on laughter-silvered wings. Sunward I've climbed and joined the tumbling mirth of sun-split clouds and done a hundred things you have not dreamed of. Wheeled and soared and swung, high in the sunlit silence, hovering there, I've chased the shouting wind along and flung my eager craft through footless halls of air. Up, up the long, delirious, burning blue, I've, I've tapped the windswept heights with easy grace where never lark or ever eagle flew. And while with silent lifting mind, I've trod the high, untrespassed sanctity of space put out my hand and touched the face of God. Group Captain Carl Schiller, OAM, CSM, is the patron of the B24 Liberator Memorial Australia. And I now invite him to present the commemorative address. Well, good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us on this Memorial Day. It is my great honour to provide the commemorative address at this inaugural service and be at this sacred place as we commemorate and reflect on the sacrifices of our service men and women who helped fight for and secure our freedom. And for those in service today who strive to keep us safe. I'm also delighted to see that there are some B-24 World War II veterans here today. Thank you for coming. We should all be privileged to be in the traditional land of the peoples of the East Kulin Nation who have cared for this land and kept it safe for countless generations. I pay my respects to their elders past and present. Australia was an innocent party in the Second World War, fighting against the Axis powers to protect England and its allies and to maintain our sovereignty against the aggression of the armed forces of the Empire of Japan. 
Today we commemorate one of the many groups of Australian service men and women who fought to protect our freedom and way of life. These are the men who flew and maintained the B-24 Liberator, the American heavy bomber that was used by several Allied Air Forces. Australian air crew flew with the RAF's Liberators, mainly with RAF Coastal Command, in the Middle East and with the South East Asia Command. Some flew Liberators with the South African Air Force's 31 and 34 Squadron, based in Italy. However, our Liberator crew's heaviest concentration was with the RAAF following its acquisition of these aircraft in 1944. Number 7 Operational Training Unit Toucanwall in New South Wales was the first unit to be equipped with the aircraft. By war's end, the RAF operated seven Liberator Bay squadrons, numbers 12, 21, 23, 24, 25, 99 and 102 squadrons. Number 200 flight flew clandestine missions. Number 201 flight was engaged in what we call today electronic warfare. Number 82 bomber wing was formed from numbers 21, 23 and 24 squadrons. The seven RAAF squadrons were the area's dominant long range bombing force, operating from bases in Northern Territory, Western Australia, Moratai and the Philippines. From 1944, numbers one and 24 squadron played a pivotal role in the invasion of Borneo and provided the main strike force and reconnaissance for Australian landings at Tarakan, Balalakapan and Laban Island. This morning, I could share with you the myriad of statistics relating to this aircraft, its technical features, performance, weaponry, in comparison with the B-17 and other heavy bombers of the time. But this is a time for reflection of the courage and commitment of those men who flew the B-24 into battle, the ground maintenance staff who enjoyed very difficult working conditions and were exposed to enemy action from the air and ground, and the families and other loved ones who felt for their safety. B-24 Liberator crew, mainly eight to 10 in number, comprised officers and enlisted men. They were the pilot, the co-pilot, the bombardier, navigator, wireless gunner, flight engineer, ball turret gunner, tail gunner, and two waste gunners. There is no imagining the feeling of the exposure of the gunners in particular, especially the turret and tail gunners firing 50 caliber machine guns. Flying bombers of any kind during Second World War was a harrowing experience. Despite their armament and multi-engines, heavy bombers were vulnerable to the anti-aircraft artillery. Unlike the agile fighter aircraft, they are limited, had limited manoeuvrability and weakness in their defences that were exploited by the enemy. They had to rely on close aircraft formation and endure the onslaught of enemy aircraft swarming like wasps protecting their nests. The aircrew had to enjoy the fear and savagery of aerial battle with grim acceptance. It's understandable the crews, like other veterans who worked in close teams, developed bonds like no other, thrust together in their aluminium fuselage in freezing conditions in a shared fate. I think it remiss if we do not express our gratitude to the entrepreneurs, innovators and production workers who transformed assembly lines and industrial plants to produce this aircraft in incredible numbers at the rate of one per hour. The B-24 Liberator was our force multiplier. The RAF acquired 270, sorry, 287 B-24s of various models, of which 33 were lost in action or accidents, with the loss of more than 200 Australian lives. As the patron of B-24 Liberator Restoration Australia, I staunchly applaud the commitment of the volunteers, past and present, who have tirelessly laboured over many years to restore A-72-176 to her former glory. The aircraft serves as a constant reminder for generations to come of the focus and courage of our B-24 crews. The memory of those Australians who, who lost in B-24 Liberator operations is an eternal 
reminder of the cost of freedom and the imperative of remaining ever vigilant. Now I invite the Reverend Keith Lanyon to um, provide a prayer of thanksgiving. Let us thank God for the courage, the foresight and the people behind this aircraft. <clears throat> Let us pray. Lord God of peace, justice and mercy. We thank you that your spirit moves the hearts of men and women, young and old, so that we may see the needs of freedom and for what is right and just. We praise you that through this spirit, men, women and children have scorned safety and ventured all in great and noble acts, known and unknown throughout history. We believe, Lord God, that through your merciful love, these acts and the efforts of nations in seeking peace and better relations with each other will finally overthrow the evil forces of greed, aggression and injustice and bring about the peace and security of the world. Hear our prayers in Jesus. Amen. We now come to the wreath laying ceremony and uh, Miss Lynn Gorman will present a wreath on behalf of the B24 Liberator Memorial and Group Captain Carl Schiller on behalf of the Air Force Association. For those that are able, would you please stand? And we're to have the Ode of Remembrance recited by Mr. Vern Roberts. And that'll be followed by The Last Post and The Rouse by Sergeant Brenton Burley from the Air Force. After that will be the National Anthem. Thank you. They shall not grow old, as we that left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them.
this way forget. Dismount. <laughs> 